Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to continue covering uh, games from the Amateur Chess Championship. Uh, this was round 3 and I got black again, which is unfortunate considering that it's only the third round of the tournament, had black the day before. What's even worse is that I got paired against someone I know is really strong. Uh, I faced my opponent, I think, four years ago when he was really young and rated maybe 15, 1600. I did manage to beat him, but I played some unsound chess and probably should have lost. In any case, I, I, I knew that he was much better than, than he used to be. Okay, so he always plays e4, I always play the Karo Khan. And previously, in our last game, I also had the black pieces and he played the tile variation of the advance. And recently, which I found out when I was preparing for the game, he's been playing the exchange variation. Now, it's really hard to make something happen uh, against this. This is very solid for white. Uh, it's very solid for black as well, but white has plans which are more aggressive. Black usually plays for the minority attack on the queen side. In comparison, white usually plays for checkmate, which is which ends the game. And in, in my experience, since I play this with both colors, it's really hard to defend for black. Even if you do get your minority attack in, you manage to create a weakness on c3. Even if you win a pawn on the queen side, even if you have more space, more active pieces, make a couple of mistakes on the king side and you can easily lose. Uh, this bishop on d3 is a great piece. The knight can often jump into e5. Sometimes uh, white continues with h4, h5, especially in variations where the queen gets to c2. The knight on f6 is either pinned or traded off, so you have to play g6, which, in, which is often theoretical. And then when there's a pawn on g6, your dark squares are weak and h4, h5 makes perfect sense. So, I was looking for something interesting to do against this. Usually, uh, black continues knight c6 and then c3 and then either knight f6 or queen c7. Knight f6 is the main line and you get positions like this, which I just talked about. Uh, alternatively, you can go queen c7, which prevents bishop f4, but and I play this with white and I enjoy playing against this. Lines with knight e2, simply preparing bishop f4 are, are very annoying for black in my opinion, unless you play e5 and, and some crazy stuff. Okay, so I was looking for something interesting and there's a setup I know, uh, which I've learned from Alireza, uh, actually, from his game uh, from Norway Chess 2020, in which he destroyed Ariantari. And if you don't know that game, uh, you should see it. I actually featured it in my uh, video on Alireza's Karokan games. So the idea is, you go knight f6 first, and white really should go c3. And now if you go knight c6, you transpose, but you don't go knight c6, uh, you play bishop to g4. And this is a very interesting move. Now, there are a couple of ways to play. You can go knight e2 here, but since the queen isn't on c7, knight e2 isn't as precise. So, for example, knight e2, you, you can go knight c6, and if h3, you can simply go bishop h5. And for some reason, there's a knight on e2 instead of f3, which means that e5 belongs to black. So, the main move here is queen to b3. My opponent actually had a pretty long think. I'm going to say 15 minutes, which is a very long thing to, to have with white on move 5, move 6. He did find queen b3. Uh, and in this position, I played my move instantly. We are still following Alireza's game against Ariantari. I played queen to c7. And now, I've simply prevented bishop f4, uh, by brute force and knight e2 isn't as good because I, I, I can take it at some point. So here White has a couple of ideas. The best move is pawn to h3 which was played by Ariantari. Uh, my opponent in this game played bishop to g5 uh, after which uh, black should be completely equal. Uh, if knight e2 is played preparing bishop to f4 you just take it. And after bishop takes e2, you go e6. You got rid of your, let's call it, bad bishop. Uh, the bishop is not on f4, so at least you have something for the bishop pair. And after, for example, knight to d2, you can go bishop to d6. And you can see that 
there will be some weaknesses around the white king. That being said, this is perfectly equal. However, white doesn't have an advantage, which is never the case in mainline exchange uh, card cons. Okay, so the main line goes h3 after this queen c7 idea, and what my opponent didn't know, what we were discussing after the game, is that the bishop has to retreat to d7. Uh, if the bishop goes to h5, which you would like to play, uh, you lose a pawn. Now, black should have full compensation for the pawn, but when I, I was explaining this variation to my opponent after the game, I told him that I never would have played bishop h5, because I don't see compensation for the pawn. And it's not easy to see why you lose the pawn. So if you go bishop h5 here, white continues g4, you go bishop g6, white takes it. There's something wrong with my connection. Okay, white takes it, black recaptures, and now pawn to g4. You have to go knight d7 and queen to d5. So black has given up a pawn, white has sort of weakened his pawn structure all over the board. The engine says equal, but I, I don't want to have black here. Uh, I gave up a pawn, I mean, I, I don't think I have enough. So, after h3, the line goes bishop to d7. And this is sort of the starting position. I'm just going to show you what Alireza did against Tari, and actually talked about that to, to Damian after the game. So this is what he did. Uh, he played e6, shut in his bishop. He castled kingside. You don't care about uh, white taking on f6 because you strengthen the e5 square and you have a natural attack along the g-file. And then he played this idea. He played knight h5, followed by f6, and then knight f4, g5. And if you don't know this setup, you should firstly study the game Tari Alireza from 2020 Norway Chess. There have been some more attempts at this setup via different move order. They weren't as successful. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to spoil the game. If you haven't seen it, you, you can see the game yourself. But this is what I wanted to play. Instead, my opponent played bishop g5. Uh, and I played e6, and the engine says black is slightly better, it's it's equal, but black definitely doesn't have any issues, he usually does, in the exchange card. Knight d2, bishop d6, h3, bishop h5, my pawn is now defended, knight gf3, knight c6, castles, castles, again, I, I don't care about bishop f6, I would love him to take, rook f1. Now here, there are two plans, uh, you, you can play for e5, but you cannot play for e5. What white has to do is play for c4 at some point, probably. Uh, and since my queen is on c7, since I'm controlling the, this diagonal, I could also go for a minority attack. I decided to go for e5 if, if I'm allowed, so I played rook f8. I also could have started with knight uh, to d7. And for example, I don't know, bishop h4, rook e8, just playing for e5. But I played rook f8. Rook a c1, and now I played bishop to g6 because I don't want to run into any issues on h7. Uh, and basically my bishop on h5 is a useless piece now, not pinning anything, just attacking a knight on f3. His bishop on d3, on the other hand, is an amazing piece. He cannot play bishop f1, really, because then my bishop is great and his is bad, so takes, takes. And he played c4 straight away, which I thought was impossible. Now, if he hadn't played c4... I would have probably played e5 on the next move. Uh, let's say rook e2, e5. And one of these two moves had to happen, so he played c4. I thought it was bad because of knight a5. And when I analyzed the game afterwards, the engine thinks black is minus uh, 0 0.3. So it's not a big advantage, but since white is going to end up with an isolated pawn, it, it should be should be better. Okay, knight a5. Now you have to move your queen. He played queen c3. I thought queen d3 was more prudent, but queen c3 is, is not much worse. Okay, and I took on c4. Now one point, one tactical point is that b3 loses a pawn for, for white, so I don't know if he missed it or not. I think he told me after the game that he saw b3 loses before he played c4, but then I, I don't understand why you'd play c4. Uh, so if you go b3, I can simply take, uh, because I'm I'm not losing a piece. I can uh, switch and with, with with knight f3. So queen c7, knight f3, check, takes, takes. And after rook c7, I can probably play something like b5. I mean, it's not a clean pawn up, but it's a pawn up, and it's knight versus bishop. 
And in this scenario, I'd actually much rather have the knight. Um, if we exchange a pair of rooks, if he allows it, for example, white doesn't play rook c1 here, then I'm really happy. I don't think it's enough to win, but loses a pawn, so... Okay, uh, if knight takes c4 in this position, then d takes c4, queen c4, queen c4, rook c4, and I simply blockade with knight d5. And this, I think, is an even more comfortable position than the one with the extra pawn, because I have a great square for my knight. Uh, and this pawn is, is a liability. In the game he played knight e5, which I expected. Uh, now, of course, I, I cannot take on e5 because my uh, bishop is loose. So if uh, if knight e5, then queen c7, and bishop c7, and d5. Now, there's actually a line which I saw afterwards with the engine, which doesn't lose a piece, but it's really hard to see during the game. I didn't see it. I just thought knight takes, loses a piece. But there's a way to save the piece. You go bishop a5, ef6, gf6. You have to, you cannot take. You have to play bishop e3. And after bishop b3, you go d4. The pawn cannot be taken. So you go bishop f4 and now g5. And now the bishop has to retreat. And you're going to take. And this should be about equal. Okay. Uh... So after knight e5, I'd already decided to play rook ac8. This simply saves my bishop. So knight e takes c4, d takes c4. And here, uh, Damian actually played the move after which the engine says black is winning. Uh, I didn't see that and I didn't calculate correctly. Uh, he took on f6. Now, the correct way to play was just, just to take on c4. And after knight takes c4, I go something like knight d5, attacking the queen, the queen moves, and, and we continue playing. Should be slightly better for black. Uh, because, of, because of the isolated queen's pawn, which doesn't really serve as an anchor in the attack, because there is no attack. Everything is perfectly defended, and there aren't enough pieces left on the board. But this was still the best way to play. Instead, he took on f6, and after gf6, he played queen f3. If you turn on the engine here, it says minus 2 for black, which, considering that the material is equal, should be an overwhelming advantage. Now, in my mind, there were two ways to play this, and, and that's correct. I chose the wrong one, but I chose the wrong one because I completely underestimated what the other path would have brought. So you can either defend your f6 pawn, which also means that you're going to have to defend it again after knight e4, meaning, for example, king g7, knight e4, bishop e7. Or, after king g7, white throws in rook takes c4, attacking the queen, which I'd expected, and then plays knight e4 later. So in my mind, defending the f6 pawn would have meant losing my pawn majority on the queen's side and losing a tempo with my bishop. So I didn't want to do that. So I didn't do that. I played b5 in the game, which isn't bad. Black is slightly better, but definitely not minus 2. Uh, the best way to play is king to g7. And after rook takes c4, you go queen a5. And this should be huge. Of course, after queen a5, there is no knight e4, which is the part I'd missed. If this rook was on c1, or on, let's say not on c1, not threatening to take on c8, but on f1, just on f1, the knight e4 and white should be better. In this case, since the a2 pawn is attacked, since the, since the knight is attacked, and if the knight moves, the rook is attacked, black is much, much better. The only move, actually, is queen c3. And now you take this, b takes repairing the pawn structure, and bishop f4. Attacking the knight, the rook is attacked, so rook c8 is forced. Rook c8, knight b1 is forced because the c3 pawn is attacked, and now rook c6 should be a huge, huge, actually winning positional advantage for black. This knight is just absurd on, on, on b1, and the pawn on c3 is terminally weak. The pawn on a2 is weak as well, not to mention that the bishop dominates the knight completely. Uh, if, if I ever get in bishop d2, I should be able to win. I didn't see queen a5. I just thought if king g7, rook c4, I thought, okay, what, what, what do I do? I should have seen queen a5. It's not, it's not hard to see. Instead, I played b5. And my reasoning was, okay, the only advantage I have is that I have a 3 to 2 pawn majority on the queen side and that he has an isolated 
queen spawn. So my advantage advantage should be positional, and I need to play slowly to convert. So b5. He played knight e4. I played bishop e7. He took on f6. Bishop f6. Queen f6. And then I saw, or then I started to be afraid. Uh, of rook e4, rook h4. And I knew that the attack probably doesn't exist or that it probably isn't strong enough to mate me, but if it ever happens, then I, I, I lose immediately. On the other hand, if he makes a mistake, I get a passed pawn, which isn't decisive just yet. So I played queen d8 and offered the draw. Th that decision is, well, motivated by two different things. Firstly, I think the position is equal and if we trade queens, I should win. If we don't, if we don't trade queens, it should be equal, but he's the one attacking. But I thought it was objectively equal and the engine says all zeros, so that's fine. Secondly, uh, this was the third day of the tournament and the only double round day. This game was played at 9 o'clock in the morning, maybe 9.30. And the next round was due to be played at 4 p.m. And since this was played far away from my house, it took me about an hour to get back and then an hour to, to get to the next round. So I decided, okay, this should be about equal. Let's go home, rest, eat, prepare for the next round and so on. He accepted the draw, so we did, we did draw. Now let's look at this position. Uh, if the queens are traded off, probably I would have won this position. I don't see how white can hold should be an overwhelming advantage uh, because I have a very clean 3 to 2 pawn majority and because the d4 pawn is so weak. What I have to do is bring my king king closer. Ideally, I would like to create a passed pawn on c3 and then get my king to c4. So what I would have done is probably something like this with f6 to make sure there is no rook e5 check and then b4 and then c3 takes takes and then king c4. If I can support the c3 pawn with the king that should be game over. And the engine agrees, it says minus one and a half, which should be enough to win. So of course he doesn't trade queens. Now there are a couple of ways to decline the queen trade. Uh, queen f3 I was afraid of, and he thought that I could just take on d4. During the game I wasn't sure. Uh, the engine says you can just take on d4, but I was too afraid to do this, because he gains one tempo and then I go back somewhere and then he does this. I mean, it's easy to see in hindsight that black is completely winning, a pawn up and all that, but major pieces g going towards your king is always scary. So I don't know if I would have taken... I had enough time on the clock to calculate, so probably had he played queen f3, I would have thought for half an hour and either taken or not taken the pawn. The best move should be queen f4, simply declining the queen trade and keeping the d4 pawn secure. And now maybe rook e7, uh, maybe rook e5, rook d7, and we trade off these pawns. This is what I thought was the most likely scenario, in which I had no idea who was better. I thought it was equal, and, and that's correct. Also, he could go queen e5, but then I could go queen d5. And again, he should decline the queen trade. But if he plays something like rook e4, and I take, and he takes with the d-pawn, yeah, okay, I should be better here, but yeah, pro probably this is harder to win than the previous position, but it should still be better for black. In any case, we drew, and unfortunately, as I'm going to explain in more detail in the next video, I didn't get to prepare for the next round at all, because there was a uh, knight and rook versus rook endgame played for a million moves, or no, 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 that was in the final round, uh, bishop and rook versus rook. And they just kept on playing, kept on playing until it was past 3 p.m. when they agreed to a draw. And the pairings got out at 3.40, something like that, 20 minutes before the round. So I was way well on my way to the round before the pairings got out. So I just couldn't prepare, prepare. but I got, got to rest at least. Okay, so this was a quick draw. Basically, we played for two and a half hours, the quickest game. The next game was far more interesting chess-wise. Uh, okay, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.